Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Crispina French, and I am a textile upcycling artist, activist, instigator. And I join, um, I come on here live every um, Tuesday, except for when there's a holiday weekend. And actually, the weekend that is coming up is a holiday so um next week on tuesday the 6th i will not be actually live um so today i am and i wanted to um, today i'm going to talk to you about um some technical stuff um my sewing machine um i use and actually right now i'm getting my my other uh, my Instagram. I like to try to go on all of these platforms at the same time. Um, so excuse me just one second while I try to figure out how to um, how to do everything at once here. Let's see. And there and we want to go live. Ding. Okay, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Okay. Now we're going live. Hi, everybody. If you're out there joining me, I would love to know um, my name. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. If you're just joining, my name is Crispina French, and I am a textile upcycling artist, activist, entrepreneur, instigator, coach. I'm pretty passionate about this um, textile upcycling that I do, and I've been doing it since way back in um, the 1980s, which I just can't believe was such a long time ago. And I'm now on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. We are all over the place. And um, I just come in um, to your feed every Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to share a little bit about textile upcycling and how that actually plays a pretty important role in our human impact on planet earth so if you're joining me for the first time welcome i'm so glad you're here i would love to know where you're tuning in from and if you just stumbled across this feed for your first time or if this is something you plan your tuesday mornings around or somewhere in between um so i'm a maker first off and i um i started my business back in 1987 as a college student at mass art in boston Massachusetts. And over the years, I developed a company that manufactured stuffed toys called ragamuffins, as well as blankets and potholder rugs and sweaters and mittens and all kinds of things. Um, and then I wrote a teaching book and that was published in 2009 by Story Publishing, which is a really lovely publishing company located close by to where I am um, in, in North Adams, Massachusetts. And um, today I just wanted to share with you a couple things. One is that sometimes when I'm sewing on my sewing machine, which I'm not sure, this is one of my sewing machines back here. This is called uh, Metropolitan and this is a, um, a cover stitch machine. And so this doesn't actually have a bobbin. It has three threads that run through it that make, it's kind of like the precursor to a serger. So the other machine that I use more often, I'm just gonna try to angle my camera around here so you can see it. So that's it. Um, there. Um, this is the Conso. I don't know if you can see my hand, but that is my Conso 199R. And that is a machine that I use to zigzag stitch. Um, a lot of my work is zigzag stitched together. This is a blanket square that I, um, so I have the squares are cut out with a heart shape. Whoops, this one's got a little 48. When I count my squares, I put little. So the heart's cut out. <laughs> and another heart is sewn into that hole. So it's just sewn edge to edge, and it's zigzag stitched. If you can see um, on your screen, there's a zigzag stitch. It's a pretty wide stitch, a pretty wide throw, it's called. Um, and when I'm stitching with this machine, I oftentimes... You know, because the zigzag is kind of wide and close together, my machine is going very quickly. And um, it, which I love, I have to say, I love sewing machine races. And when it goes really fast, the bobbin that that is in this bobbin, this is the bobbin. And it goes inside of this bobbin case, and then that goes underneath my sewing machine. So regardless of what type of sewing machine you have, most um, sewing machines have a bobbin with a bobbin case. And I don't know if this, I think it's a pretty common thing when you're really going fast 
you can actually get going so fast that your bobbin goes too fast and it overspins and then the thread gets into a bundle underneath at the bottom of your fabric. So I learned everything I know about, about um, industrial sewing machines from my friend Vinny Palermo, who um, was, is a retired um, sewing machine mechanic, and he is from Methuen, Massachusetts. So there used to be a lot of sewing um, factories in Eastern Mass, and he set me up with my first shop of sewing machines, and he found them for me. Um, they were Singer 105s. They were $25 a piece. So Vinny set me up with those machines and he also taught me how to fix them. So, which I love, I'm a really, I love mechanics and figuring that stuff out. So one of the things he showed me is that when I go really fast with my machine and that bobbin overspins, this is my um, little tip um, of the day. If you cut out a little piece of paper that is the size, so you take your bobbin out and you trace around that round, you know, the size of the bobbin on a piece of paper and you cut out a circle and then you slot it. So it's this shape, it's kind of like a donut with like a bite taken out of it shape, right? And then you put that in the bobbin case between the bobbin and the case. And just that little slip of paper will keep your thread from overrunning, from over, it'll keep your bobbin from over spinning and causing those thread clusters on the bottom of your fabric. So that is my textile upcycling tip of the day. It doesn't necessarily have to do with textile upcycling. It just has to do with construction and sewing. But do you have a tip that you like to use when you're sewing, weaving, constructing, any kind of um, textile stuff? Um, I would love for you, if you do have a tip, to share it in the comments if you can. Or um, just let me know if this is something that you've ever run into where you're just stitching along and you're you're you know, if your bobbin overspins and causes a thread cluster on the bottom, this is a way to keep that from happening. So um, let me see if does anybody have any questions about that? Because um, I'm not sure if there's um, if I was clear with that or if there's any um, questions. The, the other thing that I've done when I put this paper in, so this piece of paper and now it's kind of stuck inside my um, bobbin case, which is, it's not hard to get it out. I just need to grab like a pin and then you can just kind of wiggle it out. So if you have, you know, a thicker thread or you're not having that over spinning problem, you can pull that paper right out. You don't need to keep it in there all the time. But one of the things that I've experimented with is the, the heaviness of the paper. Like this paper is quite light. It's a lightweight paper and it worked just fine for me yesterday. And honestly, um, this has it has so much to do with like the humidity and the type of thread that you're using and the fabric that you're sewing through so all of those things play a role um in how your thread pulls off the bobbin um so you might you know try the thin paper if it's not enough you can double up the thin paper and use two pieces or you can use like a you know like a an index card weight or like you know, some of that junk mail that you might get that's a little more of like a card stock will work as well. So um, yeah, it's a super cool trick. And I think, let's say, thanks for sharing your tip. I never knew, knew what caused that once I've got past my initial start of a seam. That's from Melissa. Melissa, thanks for tuning in today, girl. I just so appreciate knowing that you're out there and you're listening and learning. I'm so happy to share that um, little bit of knowledge. It's like, you know, um, you know, those things that you learn that probably aren't written down in too many places. So you can thank St. Vinnie Palermo, who is actually not really a saint. He's kind of like a little bit of a dirty old man, but we love him. <coughs> and yes, yeah, so that is a really great tip. And then let me see, Carrie, hey, how you doing? Carrie's tuned in. What? You just saved me so much frustration. I have the same machine and zigzag all day. So I'm telling you, Carrie. The other thing I can share with you, which also is another thread tip, um, and actually it's I, maybe I can't really show this to you, but so something that happens when you're when it's really dry, if it's really dry and you're sewing a lot and your thread keeps breaking, your top thread breaks. My girlfriend Liz, who has a business making the most gorgeous leather jewelry, you'll often see me wearing. I don't have one of her pieces on today, but her um, her name is Liz Olney, O-L-N-E-Y, Elizabeth Olney. If you're on my Facebook or Instagram, I think you can find her. She's someone I follow and she's a dear friend. 
she is also a really experienced um, sewer and worked in um, the handbag industry for many years. She um, will spray her top thread cone, like the, the big cones. And actually, can you guys see on the shelf back there, the large size cones? They're like, they're like a, the size of like a pound of cone on a, of yarn, but they're thread. Um, she'll spray it with silicone spray silicone and that will keep it from breaking let me just tell you it runs right through your machine it seems a little weird like you're spraying silicone on thread but like it really just works so if you're having breakage on the top and you want to keep that from happening and just get your stuff done a little silicone spray um you want to spray the whole circumference of the cone so that it's all the way around and not just in spots and if you have um you know that over spinning the the clusters on the bottom of your work um when you're going really quick stick a piece of paper in your bobbin case um just cut out the right shape you don't want it to be too big you don't want it to come up around the edges like a pie uh, you know like a pie crust you want it to be really flat against the back wall of your bobbin case so try that out let me know if you run into any questions um and let's see i think that um i think that there is um a little bit of a thing going on for my Instagram. I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna end that and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna start over again and see if we can get the Instagram going. So um, at any rate, I would love to know, if there's there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff going on in the studio today, you guys, and it's also a little warm in here. So um, my tips are kind of, they were kind of quick. So I have a couple minutes and I'm just gonna share a couple things um, with you that might be of interest. Um, so there, I'm just gonna, give me one second, cause I, it's hard for me to multitask and I just wanna make sure that, um, that I'm on the right channel because you know um, there's just so much to do um, when there's all this technology. Am I telling you the truth? Like, uh, there's never a dull moment, right? Can any raise your hand if you're constantly learning new platforms and bowled over by what is possible with all of this technology, you guys? So, um, it's it's pretty fun and it's a little sometimes it can be overwhelming I, i'm not gonna lie it's a little overwhelming to just always feel like there's something more to learn um although i think it's sort of like what keeps you rolling right because if you feel like you know everything it's really not that much fun so all right so now i'm live on instagram where i thought i was live the whole time but it's okay um if you're interested in learning my little sewing machine tip or trick um of today if you go to rags to riches textile upcycling you can go that that is my new i created a new instagram um account for the textile upcycling podcast and summit so if you guys check that out, if you're watching and you're not, if you haven't already followed me, it would be great. If you wouldn't mind, just follow me, share it with your friends. Um, and actually, Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Podcast is my latest, like, oh my gosh, I, I think I might, might have been born to be a podcast host. I'm kind of super digging it. Um, and what happened is that it kind of grew out of the Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Summit, the virtual summit that I hosted last April. Um, so I thought, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I really wanna have a podcast and get this out into the world for free where people can learn more about how they can have, they can create um, a gentle lifestyle by just paying attention to really textiles, like your clothing, what you wear, what you buy, how you care for it, how you discard of it, right? So the podcast has been like a crazy success, you guys. Like we got literally hundreds of downloads in the first four weeks. Like I, pfft, what? I couldn't believe it. So what we're doing is we're taking a couple weeks off. We're actually taking the month of September off. We are creating a more um, fluid and comprehensive back end. So like show notes will have like a, a much better um, description, stronger links, all of that sort of thing. We are going to launch the podcast for reels on October 3rd. Um, I'm probably going to do a live episode between now and then. 
just to share the, the fact that we're taking um, the month of September to kind of reorganize and get our ducks in a row. So um, if you're interested and you want to learn more about um, that podcast episode and, and be present when it goes live, um, you can jump on my email list, which is at my website. So crispina.eco is where you can find the email list. Um, and if you're already on the email list, you'll get a notification when um, I'm ready for that live episode. Um, so that's one thing. Then the other thing that I mentioned just for a brief second there is the summit. So the Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Summit is, um, we, I hosted the first, I didn't, I'm like, let's do a summit, guys. Like my team was all like, that sounds great. And then I was like, what's a summit? Like, how do you do that? How do you do a summit? So um, I learned so much about technology, about interviews, about um, getting like and making the summit like super user friendly and fun for people. So it wasn't a technology hiccup um, in for the people that were attending. And I, I've, from what I hear from the feedback I've gotten, I think that we were pretty successful with that. So we are already beginning to plan the Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Summit for 2023. It will be hosted um, again on the same platforms that we used last year. So it's in a platform called Avio. And I cannot tell you enough good things about Avio. The people, I mean, customer service, like hand holding, just amazing, amazing people run that business and make it super easy for people like me to host um, events in it. And also for people like our attendees and our audience to really enjoy and have interact and have fun. And they really do such a great job making a virtual summit interactive and fun like you might remember those in-person events that we attended back before the pandemic being. So um, I'm really excited about it. Again, that's the Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Summit will be, mark your calendars, save the dates. It's going to be April 12th, 13th, and 14th um, this coming up year, 2023. And there's a couple things that are happening between now and then that are going to be super fun. One is that we're going to run kind of like a little mini course that's going to be end of September. We're kind of getting our ducks in a row about that as we are doing the same with the podcast platform. So end of September, if you missed our summit in April, you will be able to take advantage of this cool little mini course that we're putting together. It's recordings of all our presentations that we hosted at the summit. There are some, there's a book list. There's all kinds of fun bonuses that we put in there, some little quizzes for you. And that is something that will be available at the end of September. And we're also going to run a special. We don't have our schedule quite figured out yet, but we are going to run an early bird special on our summit tickets, our VIP summit tickets for our 2023 events. So if you want to um, take advantage of all the bonuses that we're putting together for you guys and be part of that kind of build up to what is promising to be an even more amazing event in, our, in the new year in 2023, um, you're definitely going to want to hop on the email list for that. Um, and Melissa, you were such a good rock star. I'll just tell you. She says, the Rags to Riches Summit was immensely informative. Just, I'm just so glad I attended. So, Melissa, thank you. Melissa is also a lovely, and, and Carrie, I have to say, both of you guys are members of Stitcherhood, which is our online community for textile upcycling. Whether you're an entrepreneur building a business, you're an industry professional who wants to really take the textile waste by the horns and make some changes. If you're a hobbyist and you just really love to create with, with secondhand materials, Stitcherhood is the place to be. So go to my website, crispina.eco, click on that Stitcherhood button at the top and you can Check it out. There's a free trial. You can look at it. You can hang out in there for seven days and see if it's for you. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. But I think that um, if you're a textile upcycler, I think you might really super dig it. Um, so tell me where you're tuning in from. Where are you tuning in from? And is this your first time being here? Are you catching this live or a recording? And um, just so you know, I do these live sessions. Um, 
every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm usually on here for about 20 minutes. Um, I have a question here and I don't have time to answer it right now. But if you have questions like Joanne Rich does, do you have suggestions to get rid of fragrance from clothing? I do. And that is going to be a perfect subject for me to cover in a future uh, to use Tuesday's Textile Alchemy session right here live with you on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So stick around, you guys. I'll see you next week. And I look forward to having a really super awesome launch of that podcast, October 3rd. Put that on your calendar. And I'm so excited that you were able to join me today. Thank you so much. Have a great week.